Yes, yes, we are in the quarantine, and we are getting producers, and we are talking to them and figure out what's going on, how they're coping, what they have, uh, you know, what's going on in their minds. Um, today we have, or right now, we have Kevin Lawrence. He's one of our producers. Uh, Kevin, tell um some of the people out there the stuff that you work on, you worked on prior to this uh, quarantine. Well, prior to the quarantine, COVID nineteen, they want to call it. Um, uh, I was in a rebooting process with my. Uh, my two other producers of the show, RTS Spotlight, uh, we were in the process of bringing the show back. Uh, we were on hiatus, um, but I also was working on my own project, uh, my second short film um, called Brooklyn's Peace, based here in Brooklyn. So uh, I was on maybe like two days left of filming so I can start editing, um, and then everything happened. So. Okay. I'm on hiatus. How was yeah. it? Uh, how was it contacting your guests and people that were supposed to be on your show? Because it's, it's it seems like in this time, very a lot of people are easy. Um, at the beginning, we kind of didn't know what was going on. You know, a lot of places were like coming. They were saying, you know, one date and then uh, they would come back and just totally change or whatever. So like, how was it for your guests? Uh, I guess just uh, you know, coping with what was going on from the beginning. So we had two dates to book. Um, right before the. Right, but before the boss, our president at Brick had uh, made an announcement. We had two dates already booked, and we had to cancel. Uh, we have about ten guests lined up for the season so far, but we everybody knows that you know what's going on, so we just put it pushed everything back until we find out what's going on. Um, so okay, so what so what are you right what are you working on now now that you're in the house? Because we have ample time. Um, a lot of you know people are still working, but it's like you just still have nothing but time because you know people are social distancing six six uh, inches, uh, you know whatever. What are you working on now? <laughs> six feet away from each other, so everybody's yeah, in a little feet, space. Yeah, six feet, yeah. yeah. Um, so everybody's in a little space. Um, Some people I'm giving you six inches my... when they need to give you six feet. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> You're correct. You're totally correct about that. Um, so I'm in my little space right now. This is where I get creative. Um, currently working on another short film. I'm approximately like 10 minutes in, still haven't came up with a name for the actual um, next short that I'm working on. Okay. So once I finish the other one, I can jump into production mode for the next one. Okay, okay. What have you worked on before? Um, I, I know you uh, you were former MVP. Uh, you worked on a few shows. Um, you had a film. Tell us about your film. Well, um, there's a couple of things that I have done before uh, Brick had went out on this little quarantine break, I want to say. Um, I, uh, and like I said, like you said, an MVP, most high producer of the year. Um, I am, I did a documentary through Brick TV called Work Behind the Ball. Okay. Uh, something that's really like 2019 has really uh, made me know that that I'm an amazing creative person, so I kept continue pushing. Then I just dropped something back in February called Transcend with Miss Pearl. It's about a trans woman uh, who uh, lived the nightlife, who was a showgirl, a uh, okay. promoter, and had all these showboys you want to call them dancers uh, living the life, you know, learning about that lifestyle back in the '80s, early okay. '90s. So I follow her and got some information about her on uh, dealing with the nightlife. Okay. So what, so what, what's some uh, yeah. advice I guess you would have for somebody coming out of this? Cause of course, you know, at some point we plan on, we don't plan on being here forever. Um, and you're in a creative mode. Like what, what's something that you would tell somebody to do uh, coming out of this after, you know, you are saying uh, the type of year you had in 2019. Uh, I want people to keep pushing. Um, and don't forget where you where where you were at last. Just pick up the pieces and continue going. Um, that's all I can say. And what do you have to look forward to once they open up outside again? Uh, I'm ready to finish this film. Um, I'm ready to start shipping it to film festivals. That's where I'm at right now. Cool. All right, man. So until next time, we'll see you. Hopefully, we we don't have to do too many of these. Um, but, you know, we want to check in with producers and make sure everybody is doing well, man. I appreciate you for uh, taking your time out. Yep. Shout out to my Brick family. I miss y'all. See y'all soon. Is it recording yet? Oh, 
We are recording. We are recording. Yes, yes, yes. So we are back. This is Be Free uh, Quarantine. Um, I have one of our newer producers, <laughs> Tanu. Uh, talk to us. Tell us, what you, tell us what you were working on prior to this whole uh, pandemic going on. So prior to the pandemic, I was really excited to work on my podcast. And I had figured out this whole formula about how to be a successful comedian. And um, here we are. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I saw, I saw you've been doing a lot of uh, some Zoom uh, comedy stuff or whatever. Has, has that helped out with your um, yes. time away? Yeah, so one of the things that I was really concerned about, Sean, is the fact that, you know, in comedy, what we do, if the audience doesn't know, we try out one joke several times in different places, in different comedy clubs. Okay. And that gives you the idea to see, okay, this works with this demographic, this doesn't work at all, cut it. So we're constantly refining and reworking jokes, right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden there's no rooms because yeah. people can't congregate. And so I just remember getting emails like, okay, well only 20 people are allowed to the show and then the show is shows are canceled. And so I was doing open mics around the city and mm -hmm. all of a sudden there's nothing. And, um, I just remembered going to sleep one night and before I went to sleep, I was in prayer and I was just like, God, give me an answer of what to do. Mm -hmm. Really wonderful homegirl. Her name is Holly Merchinson. I got on a call with her and she was like, Zoom, because my concern with Instagram Live and Facebook Live was you don't get any feedback. Absolutely. Um, they're texting or they're typing to you while you're speaking. It's just very distracting. And I didn't think that it would be appropriate for the kind of work that I do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I, tr I tried the Zoom room. It went well. Um, and it's been going well. I was doing it every Tuesday night on Instagram Live. And um, I actually have to change that because I got an opportunity. I don't know. It's an interesting thing. So I applied to UCB. UCB is up, uh, Upright Citizens Brigade. It's a pretty well-known um, comedy company. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing that I like is that they have like ends for industry writers. And that's one of my go goals as well. Okay. And so I applied for the diversity scholarship. I'm not sure if I got it, but they called me to do an we'll, we'll cross online. Our, we'll cross class. our fingers. We'll cross our fingers for you. Yes, I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. So that online class takes place on Tuesdays. So I have to change the date of my Zoom that I was doing live. Uh -huh. But even the Zoom started to become a little awkward and just not, I don't know. It just it wasn't, it doesn't, it's, it's not live, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I think by this point in the quarantine, we're all zoomed out. Yeah. Like people are zoomed out, they're FaceTimed out, they're Google chat classrooms. Like it's people are I'm tired of it. Yeah. Well, considering um, a lot of times a lot of people don't even like the uh FaceTime as is. So it's like, you know, this is this is reintroducing uh, another form of communication to a lot of different people. Some people don't really have, you know, uh they just don't download these 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 things or whatever, and now they're forced to use it. Right. I know you're a mom, um, so how's that working out with you and, and, and your youngin? Um, just you know, trying to you know do the whole Zoom thing and learning and stuff like that. How's that going for you? So gratefully, thankfully, my daughter was homeschooled prior to this grand apocalypse. Okay. <laughs> um, so we kind of had a rhythm in terms of just. Like, you know, when she does her sit down school work, when, when learning is in process, how, you know, there's just a rhythm in the household. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not bad. I, what I love is that my family can spend so much time together. Okay. You know, like my husband was working in New Jersey and commuting to New Jersey every day from Brooklyn, New York. Okay. So that was like, uh, mm -hmm. now he's at home. Okay. You know, and we have a newborn also, and so the newborn's with him, and I'm talking ah, to him. Ah, okay, congrats, it's, congrats. It's, it's a lot more, yeah, it's a lot more balanced in terms of, like, the, 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 the hand work mm -hmm. for me personally, um, or not, because, <laughs> we, oh, here it is. We are in the Look, quarantine, and, I, and that's I'm good, because hey, everybody needs to see how. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on in. Come on in. Everybody needs to right. see how we, we all people living, a, you know, we live in a regular life and this stuff goes on, you know? <laughs> this is right. Exactly what happened. He's like, I need his teething ring. Okay. 
Cool. Um, so, but, so, so what, what type yeah. of stuff, what type of stuff, okay, so now that you're home, you said you were doing the comedy stuff, so what, like, what are your steps you kind of do going forward or whatever, um, you know, I guess aside from, aside from comedy, what else are you trying to work on? So I am working on a sitcom. Okay. Quite honestly, I think this, it's been interesting writing for it, mm -hmm. um, and, and it's been actually much more challenging than okay. it was prior. I am writing comedy every, almost every day. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll be honest about that. I was, I had a better regimen, but what happened family-wise is that because for some reason, we're all getting up later and we're all going to sleep later. <laughs> so Absolutely. it's kind of like everything's been pushed kind of back, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I say that's to say that um, it, it changed my writing times, which mm -hmm. were like really regimented. And now it's kind of more free for all as long as I get it done. So question um, for you, what, what goals do you have with all that being said? With all that being said, it's so interesting. My, my goals haven't changed. Okay. I just know that I have to let go of how they're going to look, mm -hmm. right? How they're going to unfold, right? Okay. So in my, my mind, I got into UCB because I'm taking a free class, okay. right? Okay. So that was one of my goals. Um, one of my goals is to make sure that I'm constantly working on my tele television writing skills. Okay. That's happening. Okay. Um, another one of my goals involves doing comedy in front of a stadium. Now that, <laughs> I'm not sure about how. Okay. But I know it's not a matter of how, how but when. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm just keeping Timing. that in the forefront of my mind. Mm -hmm. Um. I was working on a podcast that's mm, kind of slowed down a lot. But one thing that actually picked up when my daughter was born seven years ago, I penned a children's book about Nina Simone. Okay. My illustrator has all the time in the world now. Okay. <laughs> so he's been busting out like pages like constantly. So I'm just like, yes. Okay. So I'm looking forward to launching that. Um, it should be fun to do and to like push to people because the idea behind that book is that creativity is such a driving force in our lives that we can use creativity to be activists we can use creativity to connect with people and so i'm really excited about releasing that that's and, great uh, one of the things that we were doing on instagram my daughter and i was doing a daily story time just because people need to hear stories you know people need to just be with their children or even not with their children and just yeah. listen to stories you know mm -hmm. so that's been something that's been really helpful how has uh how, how, not to cut you off i'm sorry because it's, it's a lot oh, i kind of want to get into so how, how has the um the actual homeschool experience um worked out with this transition since you kind of are were already doing it already anyways um so the the in the the, the most challenging thing sean is that she's not going out Okay. That's been very hard. I'm proud of her because she's been extremely creative right now. She's singing an aria. I'm sure you can hear her. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm like, what? Uh -huh. um, she made an RV yesterday out of an umbrella, an old scooter, my small luggage, and my good sheets. Okay. So she's kind of like doing her own thing, you know? Imagination. Um, is much freer. I'm like, you want to be on the computer to escape for two hours? I would have never yeah. been like fine on the computer for two or three hours straight. Now uh -huh. I'm like, it's fine. You're you're a Corona kid. You need to de-stress. <laughs> you what, know. What are some um, things you look forward to though afterwards? Oh my God. Hugs. Okay. Well, you might have to wait for that. You might have to wait for the second wave of hugs, you know, once they find Yeah, no, I definitely know it's going to, I don't want to hug. Um, I can't wait to go to the nail salon. Mm -hmm. um, looking forward to, and you know what? It's interesting you asking this question because I, um, I have a friend who's getting her master in disaster strategy and she's a doula. Wow. And one of the things, yeah, she's powerful shit, really powerful stuff, excuse mm -hmm. me. Um, and one of the things that she talks about is in certain communities, there's this uh, idea about getting things back, like bouncing back. And okay. the idea is subconsciously respected because it's like bouncing back to what? You know, and mm -hmm. we have to really look at how we experience wanting to get things normal. 
and okay. where our comfort zones lie and not only where our comfort zones lie, but in what ways are we willing to push the envelope and change what was normal to us so that yeah. we can have a better life experience, right? Yes. Because the reality is you can't tell me that we all got put on punishment. We <laughs> all got put on time out uh -huh. at one time, mind you. Yeah. We're all experiencing grief. If it's not personally direct, somebody that you know is experiencing grief. Mm -hmm. We're all isolated. We're all experiencing this in one time. And there's so many theories about why it's happening. And that's not important. Yeah. For me, I'm focused on what is happening and why is that what happening? Yeah. And what can I do to learn and grow and, and become um, more of myself and more free mm -hmm. throughout what is happening, right? Yeah. And so one of the things I saw my daughter, life is about learning and growing and loving. Okay. That's it. If you're not learning and growing and loving, you're not alive. You're, you're very glass half empty, and I appreciate that, especially in a time like this with a lot of stuff that's going on. I have to be like that as well because it's like you have to find ways to cope and not try to, like, you know, drive yourself crazy because, you know, it's so much, so many bad uh, reports and things going out there, people are losing their life. So it's very important. So, like I said, you, you, you were doing the comedy thing. You're still doing the comedy thing. I, I, I applaud you for that because I like to joke oh, around, but, but it's very hard to kind of be funny on, you know, when you need to be funny. So, but I'm gonna know. tell you something about that though. Uh huh. You know, this shit is funny, not funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, ha ha hell. You yeah. know, it's, it's funny, not funny. Absolutely. But that's life though, right? Yep. Yep. Like, if you think about it, none of the stuff we really be laughing at is all the way funny. No. Nah. The nope. truth about it is not funny, but nope. how we experience it is hilarious. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I'm gonna tell you a little story. I I had locks my whole life, my whole life since I was. I was gonna ask you old. about that. Yeah. Okay. Let me tell you what had happened. Uh huh. Mama was like, "I'm gonna do something new. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna cut my hair. I cut my hair. I didn't like the way it looked. My husband loved it. I didn't like it. It was a little longer than this, right? Okay. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get my first perm. Mm, okay. Yo. Got You're supposed to refresh your perm every six weeks. Uh-huh. Bro, my shit was this high off the top of my head, nappy. <laughs> <laughs> the perm was like... Did this happen, this, this happen, while, this happen while we were in quarantine? This is or? all my corona perm experience. Oh, yes. okay, okay. I, had to, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta reference it because I was like, what was going? okay, that's nuts. Okay, all right, okay. I never perm my hair in my life, and I've mm -hmm. heard so many horror stories. Have you heard, like, black women be like, I got a ball spot, and yeah. I got an ankle ink, and then I, and I burnt, it was itching, and I'm scratching, and we all saw Malcolm X, he had to put yeah. his head in the court, like. Absolutely. So I was like, okay, <laughs> what am I going to do? Like, my hair is growing out. I don't want it to start breaking. Like, I, I rebuke ball spots in the name of Jesus. Like, I can't do it. I mean. <laughs> I am a ball spot. <laughs> Not your kind of ball spot. <laughs> but yeah, no, I can't, like, nobody can help me. My husband be looking at me crazy, like, you uh -huh. know? So I was like, all right, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do. I went to the store, Sean, it wasn't no perms left. Yeah. yeah. I went to Rite Aid over here, and it was the whole natural hair kit. It was all the natural hair care products was all there. Yeah. Yeah. The perm section was da dun dun Yeah. Well, it's, it's like, everybody, everybody's trying to find a way to like kind of keep yourself up. Some like for a while I was scruffing it, and then, then eventually I said, you know what, I can't do this. I have to have some type of level of uh, consistency. Self respect. You say self respect, I say consistency. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I mean, it, 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 it is what it is. So tell everybody where they can where they can find you at because you are online, and I do want people to come and check you out because you Absolutely. are doing a lot of good things. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So um, my Instagram name is Tanu Tom. Mm -hmm. T U N U T H. Look at me showing off my sound like I was. I was gonna ask you. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah, and my Facebook is also to New Tom. I'm working on my website. Actually, hopefully, it'll be launched after Corona. Right? That's exciting. Launch after um, Corona. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm definitely excited. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook. Where else? There's probably other places. You can find you at break when we open back up. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my goodness. I miss my break family. I miss I miss 
you know, the most thing I miss being outside and not feeling like I have to hurry up. Yeah, you don't have to wait for the street lights to come on. You know, I mean, I mean, yo, that's a whole nother level. Yeah, yeah it kind of feels like we're policing each other outside. Yeah, you know? it's very yeah. strange. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up because we've been going. I gotta get some more people, and I appreciate you for uh, making some time. Well, we appreciate you too. Like I said, we <laughs> like I'm a thousand people. No, but it's it's more people in your house, so we appreciate you. We you know you we yeah, definitely gonna be up on the so channels, much, and we'll love. see you soon. All right. All right, dude. All right. Up. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Later. Have a good one. Thank you so much. All right. Recording, recording. I am with Anthony Jones, one of our many producers at Brick. Currently, he's playing video games. I guess that's how he's uh, getting himself uh, through this quarantine. Anthony, what were you doing um, prior to this uh, that uh, was put on hold? Uh, I mean, everything. All I, all I do is film. So, uh, I mean, it's it kind of jammed us up not having the um, – the station to to record the uh, the the real fans real talk or the podcast you understood, but um, we figured it out and uh, we've been recording shows. So I got a uh, you know I found I got two episodes of real fans real talk done and we've been shooting. We I don't think we even really stopped uh, recording the podcast. Okay, so we been managing. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So I know you were looking forward to the Be Free um, Awards. You won a few times in the past. Um, like, how did you feel about that? You know, when uh, you found out that was going to be canceled. Uh, I mean, it's it sucks because you know what I'm saying I'm like, because I mean, I at, at this point, I don't really think about it for myself, but I, you know, I think about it more so for the people on the team that haven't experienced that, mm -hmm. and um, so you know, I kind of want that experience for them. So, you know, it, it sucks, but, you know, I get it. I, I understand. You know what I'm saying? This is what's, it's what's necessary. And, I'm, you know, it's not – I don't think it's something where it's never going to happen. You know, we'll get back to normal uh, at some point. So, I'm not really concerned about it too much. But it does it does suck. It's, it stings a little bit. Okay. So, so what are you – I know you said you're working on a podcast. You're still working on the show. Um, how was it trying to navigate and try to figure out new ways to work on the show? Because a lot of people's production stopped during this time. Yeah, I didn't know what we were going to do as far as uh, Real Fans, Real Talk goes. But once we started recording the podcast through Zoom and I uh, I realized that we could just take the video as well, then it was uh, back to business as usual. Back so to business. Kind of haven't really missed a beat. So what are you working on outside of that? Are you still editing and stuff like that? Because I know you said you're a shooter as well. Yeah, um, I literally right before this whole thing happened, um, I started shooting with uh with Jackie Reed. She used to host the nightly news on BT. Now she's on NBC now. Okay. So I started shooting her podcast. Um, so I was actually working on that when we got shut down. Like we had just finished it. I started the editing process, and we were kind of going back and forth on her uh, on on her podcast and where she wanted to go with it. You know, so that's what I was working on literally just as, as this, we got shut down. So do you have any personal goals for yourself, like, uh, you know, coming out of this? Because, you know, a lot of stuff has been stopped. Um, a lot of people have time to think about what they what they want to do. Like, do you have any personal goals coming out of this, like stuff that you want to do after um, this is over with? Um, I mean, the goals haven't really changed just because we haven't really stopped working. And even, you know, before we were – figured out that we were going to start recording the show through zoom um you know we were still working uh eric was still pumping out blogs every week i was still doing the same work i was doing as far as with the website and you know and the, the different social media outlets that we uh utilize so the, you know the goal is still the same you know yeah, so we are in the quarantine. I, I'm I'm telling everybody to be quiet in the background myself. Um, so uh, the 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 uh, you're, you're in the quarantine, um, and we're planning to come out at some point. Do you have any advice for uh, for anybody else? You know, that's looking forward to being outside again. Be prepared, cause you might have to go back inside. You you know, you never know. I okay. think that it's just a matter of kind of setting yourself up. So that, like, for me personally, 
the quarantine really didn't affect me outside of just my personal needs of just wanting to, and not even needs personal wants of just wanting to do stuff and interact with uh with my peers um you know what i'm saying like i definitely miss the camaraderie of us being at the station with the whole crew because we got like a whole family vibe same thing with recording the podcast so you know i would just say prepare yourself for if you ever have to work from inside the home can you generate some type of revenue while you're sitting at home you know, playing 2K. Get your YouTube channel up. Try to get your, you know, get your subscribers up so you can make a little bit of money off your off your channel. You know, just figure out different ways of generating income. That's all. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, you know, until uh, next time, everybody's going to see this up on our channels. Um, shout outs, anything? No, man, listen, man, just, I mean, of course, shout out to, to, to my, my team, the whole Real Fans Real Talk, shooting the uh, family. Shout out to everybody. I hope y'all, everybody's, you know, keeping a cool head during this time. I know it's stressful for a lot of people because I'm, like, again, I'm fortunate enough to, you know, saying financially I'm good during this time if I can't go outside, but I know it's a lot of people out there that's not good. I know it's a lot of people out there, you know, that weren't blessed to, have their own production company with all the equipment and everything, you know what I'm saying? So where something like this happens and, and realistically the work doesn't stop for me, but I know a lot of my peers at Brick, they're not fortunate enough to where they own their own cameras, they can record in the house or own, you know, just the, the, the editing equipment, editing software that you need and, and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? So, but definitely, so shout out to everybody, man. Just don't let this thing get you down. We're going to be out of this soon. You know, and just get ready to get back to the grind. And, and what we'll continue to say, we've been doing classes right now. For those that are interested, you can definitely take the classes. So if you know if anybody that wants to take classes and keep themselves busy, um, go on over to our education um, page on the uh, website, and you can see what's going on. Anthony, thank you, man. Um, now, so I do, have, I do have a question for you, though, real quick in regards to the, the classes thing. Because, <laughs> again, I know a lot of – my my peers that are at Brick, they might not have a computer at home. So, you know, is there something that you guys can do for the well, people that don't? Well, right now the classes are only for individuals that have access to computers. We can't um, just give out computers to everybody because that is a cost. Um, uh, you know, a lot of stuff has stopped because of, um, you know, the COVID and stuff like that. Um, we've had to cancel classes and stuff like that. So it's, it's a financial um, issue on our behalf as well because we are an organization. Um, so uh, right now it's only the classes that you, only classes that you can take um, would be only, only people that can take classes right now would be individuals that will have an actual uh, computer. Potentially if you have a phone as well, you yeah. might be able to do that also. Um, that's another option, but um, that that would oh, be yeah, the, only, the only got, two ways. Yeah, so got a you know, smartphone. Yeah, so a smartphone or a computer, a uh, tablet or uh, iPad, those uh, would probably be the best ways to um take classes. You know, we're trying to continue to just do things because um a lot of stuff to stop. A lot of uh, you know kids are doing Zoom and stuff like that. I know you have God kids and stuff like that. Um, so you know, mm -hmm. it, it's a lot going on, man. But thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We just wanted to you know chop it up with some producers and see what's going on and make sure that everybody's mind is in the, in the right place. No problem. You be cool. How you be cool? <laughs> Cause I'm gonna be cooler. <laughs> <laughs>